1089 and 1053 AM. The Clash of the Titans on Talk Sport. Right, it's that time of the year again. Can't sorry, sorry, it. can I stop? Can I stop you? I just wanted to say that, so. Right, it's that time of the year again. Yeah, I can't believe it. One year gone, and it's the annual clash of the Titans. I the three you, big I, guns I, are I, in I, here. Thank you. I thought you were going to call it the three big guns this year. No, no, we'll stick to Clash of the Titans. Can I just so say, can I just say that if we're going to keep everything that we've done so far, including James Wales' interruption and Mike Dickens' interruption, <laughs> that the only thing that was wrong with last year Who are you? was the bloody interruptions. <laughs> right, so we're off to a flying start, gentlemen. We have two hours. Two hours, and each of the issues, uh, each of the issues, I'll try and get it right today, will be asked to uh, give us a brief one minute monologue to outline Are you reading that off a script? No, I'm not. Are you <coughs> sure? No interruptions, please. And after that, it's no holds bar, so get stuck in. Yeah. Right, our could first... You do it, listen, could you do us a favour? Could you stop sounding like a sports presenter? Yeah. All right? Yeah. Stop doing it. Yeah, but I am advice. a sports presenter. You guys are chat hosts. Ow, like ow, ow, ow. We're, we're sports presenters. <laughs> These guys are in trouble. Right, thank you, Tommy. Tommy. Yeah. Right, no, 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 hang on, hang on. Our shows, our shows are sports in themselves. Really? Yes. Right. Great. So we sorted that one out. Okay, Mom. So, person <laughs> of the year, okay? Uh, the man or oh, woman? I can't believe uh, these two across from us, Tom. are going to talk about woman of the year, yeah. but you never know. Uh, the most impact. Do I feel a little bit divisiveness? Suddenly, yeah. suddenly, it's you and them, isn't it? Yeah. Well, if that's the way they want it, right? right. Mm -hmm. Or perhaps um, something, someone. Let's stick to someone that you think has made an outstanding contribution to society. Mm. So, Tommy. Uh, I'd love to start with you, Tommy, <coughs> one minute from now. Okay, well, um, I find with a thing like this, that it, often it's, it's easy to, to concentrate on somebody who's come your way over the last couple of weeks or months, so years a long time, but I do have a figure in mind, but I would like to say seriously that my answer to this question should be what everybody's answer to this question should be. He's now Mike, telling us what we should say. That's an interruption, that's a, a <laughs> point. That's a point, off. That's, right, a point okay, off. Yeah. that's a point off for interruptions during the monologue. <laughs> okay, at the back. What a load of... That's two uh, points off. Tommy, you're now down to 27 seconds left. Thank you. My, my, my man of the year? Mike Dickens' man of the year should be Mike Dickin. And yours, Al, should be Alan Brazil. Why? And you, Jane, should be Jane. Why? <laughs> because we know what we've been through. My man of the year? <clears throat> Tommy Boyd. Tommy <laughs> Boyd. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Dickin, professor, crack on. What, what a cop-out that was, wasn't it? That, well, uh, I don't want to give it any thought, so I'll talk about myself. Fair enough, Tom. <laughs> um, my, my man of the year is the man who's managed to stay hidden despite holding one of the most prominent positions anywhere in this country. Nobody would recognise him if he's walked up and bit them on the nose. Um, he has a high profile, but nobody would know who the hell he is anytime, anywhere. And when he speaks, nobody listens. When he turns up, nobody bothers to notice. His name is Ian Duncan Smith. He's the leader of the Tory party, <laughs> who, uh, leading them to total oblivion, but he forgot that's where they started, so it's a very short journey. Ian Duncan Smith, man of the year. Nobody would know if he turned up for Christmas dinner. <laughs> uh, Mr. Whale chuckling away in the background. Well, OK, um, I, I think I would concur with both my learned colleagues over on the other side of the studio here, but I would like to add just a little eye candy for all of us. Um, first of all, Atomic Kitten, or as I prefer to call them, Atomic Pussy. There's one for each, <laughs> and I think they have to be the person of the year. This was, in fact, person of the year. They have done more to brighten up my year than anybody else, except maybe Mr. Sunkowl from uh, that television show called Pop Idols, I think. Uh, a man who has got everybody going because he actually speaks the truth and tells these awful, awful kids who think they've got everything to offer the pop industry that they ain't good enough. And he tells them in such a way that it makes me laugh. Pop Idols. I must... I have to... I honestly hold my hands up. I haven't seen it. I love no, you. that's because you are spending your time in these, these trashy clubs you go to with these strange women you frequent. No, no, no. Well, I think the scene is set for the next couple of hours, well, really, isn't it? I mean, James Wells has been completely superficial. Mike Dickin has answered the question, who had the most impact over the last 12 years with, by identifying clearly, and he knows it, the person who had the least impact over Correct. the last 12 months. Correct. So he hasn't had <laughs> any of the small print or the large print. I stand by what I said. The is, Mr. Boy, me. is Mr. Boyd going to continue to try to attack us just oh, to no. show that... His inadequacies, 
or is it inadequacies are hidden? I think that's the word. Yes, yeah. I think, yeah. 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 I, I, I might think, have been I think to choose time. yourself as man of the year mm. is truly going over the bottom. <laughs> well, we don't want to talk about his sexual preferences, do we? But it's a serious no, point no, I'm no, making, no. and it might be futuristic, but I am a man of the future, and sitting <coughs> in this room... <coughs> you, you know, Tommy Boyd... With dinosaurs. In interesting thing, Michael, Tommy Boyd, who has been with us since I was... I, th I think since I was in primary school. He was on television, he's been broadcasting, and yet... He, he was on television before I had a television. Really? Yeah, but hold but on, he, guys. Hasn't he worn well? It's evergreen, hasn't isn't he? Hasn't he worn well? Isn't it evergreen? I think Absolutely. there's something not quite right about an elderly gentleman wearing clothes of a teenager and trying his hardest to hang on to what is fashionable. I prefer him in monochrome. Mm. I've got a younger brother who was once asked if he was my dad. Really? And uh, happy, I'm proud, happy I, I, Christmas no, to the younger part of, part of, Bobby's not listening. Since we're talking, I hope he is listening. David, 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 David Blunkett, then. Uh, 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 go on, then, the secret wonder. of life, then, Cliff. Uh, 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 how have you managed this? Could I suggest, Mr. Chairman, you bring this back into some kind of order? No, right? he wants to find out what my secret is, and wouldn't you like to know? I'll tell you. So, no, it's simple as this. I couldn't get served in a pub without my mate being there until I was about 26. And I cried to my mum about that, and she said, don't you worry, she said, because when you're in your late 40s, you'll still be able to talk. Late 40s? Well, I don't... <laughs> That's not going to do any longer. But at least I've got to... I mean, and, and Dickie, poor old Selective, Mike. selective you, memory, he talked about He talked about biting people on the nose. Do you know what he was asking for before you came in, no, Al? Got a, a pair of tweezers, because what he needs it? to get a, a hair out of the biz nose. No, 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 the hair. Use, use, your, hair. You know, use your nails. Anyway, anyway, let's go on. Mm. Talking of pubs, well, Tommy, you're first stop mm. after the show, because we're around the boozer, that's what we yep. We've got to celebrate Christmas. Right, you war. Paying? War. I will pay. You're on. Yeah. At right. that time, you did. War, Miss... Oh, no, sorry, it's Mike Dickin to... Pardon? <laughs> Are they what? talking to you in there? Oh, yeah, just, Ignore just them. Us, uh, Ignore them. He's just told us who his yeah. person he is. Yeah. Ain't hey, Duncan Smith. Who? Yeah. <laughs> no, so Tommy says himself, Mike, are you serious in Duncan Smith? Well, I think if you're looking for somebody that's had a high profile and managed to stay hidden for so long, the only other one I think of is Bin Laden. Yeah. Now, why doesn't anybody follow up what I said about Bin Laden? He is living in Mayfair, not far from the Saudi embassy, obviously, and working in a local supermarket. No, he's not. He was the, bu he was not, he was the conductor on the bus I came in on this morning. Well, anyway, he's in this country. Nothing to say, Al? Uh, no, I I, to be honest, I'm, I'm get, I, I get a bit disappointed with what's happened now. You know, the whole point of bombing the living daylights of Afghanistan yeah. was to catch Bin Laden. And no, yet, it wasn't. Uh, weeks no, ago, it wasn't. Go on then, what was it then? It practice. was the point. was practice. Yes, exactly right, Michael. Oh, practice. Come, and any come, more of these come. countries who want to upset us if, if you, show what they're going to get. If you've got a £32 billion pound aeroplane and you've got nowhere to go and play with it, you find some far eastern country where nobody cares, and exactly. you say, bring our stealth bomber over and bomb the hell out of it. Nobody else. We've got nowhere else to play with it. We oh. built it. Well, we want to play with it. No, I can't, I can't Big agree boys with you. I can't agree with you. Don't you agree with me, Mike, that if we were to reinstate the British Empire, the world would be a happier place? I People like, would know where they stood. I'd like to see no, them no, covered no, in no, pink. No, no, no. I just want to the British Empire. Gravitas, uh, to this uh, schoolboy wittering that I've got from sort of stage right and stage left here. I mean, we are talking about the <coughs> most <coughs> earth-shattering event of the century so far. Who will um, ever forget it? Well, uh, that's what I want to say, Al. I, here, here's an original thought. Everybody... What? Yes. Yes, an oh, original thought. My own. My own. And, and, and one which you'll have to pause and think about before you come back. Really? How about for a technique? You... He's waffling. Everybody said on September the 11th and the 12th that the world will never be the same again. Mm. But think about it. It's right back to normal. Absolutely mm. Mm. right back to normal. We have the shot, man, as you're right. Nothing has changed. Nothing is different. Well, I was thinking a man that's not true. I mean, there are lots of people still aren't flying on aeroplanes because yeah. they're too scared. So the Americans are staying at home because they always do when there's any trouble. So uh, airlines are going out of business. The Mojave Desert has got 10,000 aircraft parked on it that nobody wants to use simply mm. because of September the 11th. Yeah, but Tommy is, I hate to say this, I'm, I'm uh, upsetting myself just hearing the words trickle off the end of my rather salubrious yes. tongue. I've made a very powerful <coughs> and original point. Tommy has said, so I sat there, we all sat there, everybody sat there and watched uh, those aeroplanes being flown into those uh, people working, well, all right. We, I couldn't, I was away day. on holiday. I, I was, was in the middle of a lake. I was actually Germany. sitting in Langham's Gradually. <laughs> oh, shut up. Look, can we just keep the point? This yeah, is, be quiet. Let's, let's have this as the only serious point, because the year has been a year we would all 
choose to forget, really. But Tommy's right. We have now returned to the way we have uh, been before. We don't care. We're more interested. You've been out on the streets. People are rushing here, there, and everywhere just to make sure they get what they want for Christmas. Nobody's smiling at anybody anywhere else. The amount of people looking miserable in motor cars is horrendous. People have forgotten there is mm. more to life than worrying about what's happening. And, uh, you, you know, it's just people are not living again. They were living for a few weeks around it. They were, everybody changed. People were quite pleasant. But now, just look at the state of the world. Look at the state of the Middle East. Look at the, the Israelis and the Palestinians. Just look, they've learnt nothing. Mm. They, 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 nothing. they were like that before. Oh. Isn't it incredible? We hear about at Christmas as well in Jerusalem, the holy city, Bethlehem, Jerusalem. Shocking. Well, if God is sending his son back again, who? do not allow it to come anywhere near me. Because look what happened when he went to the first place. Tommy? I'm just trying to work that one out. Well, um, I don't know what he's talking about. Huh? Well, I, I, I would say this, it's, and this is a serious topic, and I'm, I'm, I'm pleased once again to bring to bring the appropriate level of uh, authority and Gosh, gravity. Shut up, and Tommy, get on with it. Where's that good? journalistic experience to this uh, particular debate? Magpie. The world is all. The world has always been a volatile place, uh, and I always send out at this time of year to my loved ones and even to the folks in this room. Uh, the same message. The world is slowly becoming a better place. Otherwise, I wouldn't have had children. Yeah, oh, becoming a better place. Oh. Yes. Well, I, I don't know. If I thought Tony Blair had got. If you like, I'll explain on. why. If you like, I'll explain yeah, why. On, on, if you like, I'll explain why. Because when I was a boy, the shadow of the Cold War fell across every human activity. Uh, we had uh, a Berlin Wall, which we never thought would come down. We had a situation in Southern Africa, which we thought would possibly end in a, in, in a Holocaust. Uh, no one would dispute that there is a peace process and it is working, even by anaesthetic alone, in Northern Ireland. It leaves the Middle East as being the world's solitary, genuine tinderbox. And that ain't a bad result over the last couple of decades. That's ridiculous. First of all, there's more wars going on on this planet than there has ever been before. Never 80, mind about this. Yeah. At the moment. Never mind about the silly little skirmish of the ignorant people. Name the Mike. In Northern I can't. Ireland. <laughs> I can't. I've just got them from the Foreign Office this morning. 82 <laughs> current wars in which uh, there are people's lives being lost every day. And to say the Berlin Wall coming down was a good thing is ridiculous. Have you been to Eastern Germany? Do we Eastern actually? Let's, let's, down? Just, let's just uh, it's think of this for one moment. Do we actually think that the world has improved since the down? downfall of the Soviet Union, or has the downfall of the Soviet Union made the world a slightly more dangerous place? Well, well if you're somebody, as I am, who watched his parents rehearse putting a sheet over the kitchen table and getting the family underneath. We all did. We're all of the same age. The answer is yes. You think it's safer? In that respect. You don't think that the fact that now people are selling uh, suitcase bombs, a number of nuclear... Um, tittle-tattle. But it's that's, not. That's tittle -tattle. It's not. The okay. Americans well, have well, found okay, out then there are a up. vast number... No, 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 no. Put up. But I'm missing. Oh, you sound like people who phone me and say it's a well-known fact. Put up or shut up. Put up what? It's facts. You we want to take places. Tommy, Arm, arms Tommy the facts. Arms are now currency. There's no doubt about that. Exactly. Uh, there's no doubt about that. <laughs> no, there no, is no doubt about it. Here's arms, the doubt. Arms facts. are currency in Pakistan and Afghanistan, and the Russians have got the arms to deal. The, the Russians have got no money, but if you want a nuclear Ooh. device, uh, okay. all you've got to do is walk across the border well, and buy just one. Just on that, Tommy, the Russians... Uh, talking about the Berlin, Berlin Wall coming down and the Soviet Union expanding. Crikey, just pop down to Marbella and see how many rich Russians are there. Do we they have tell me to they're keep coming to London. this back to your social life? Marbella, Tram, Langans, La Manga. La Manga's La Manga, La even better, yeah, right? That's where no, Manchester United. No. That's where Manchester United. Manchester's moving today. today. And you, do you know, <laughs> Tom, I haven't seen you in OK or Hello magazine for years. <laughs> then, then, then. So obviously you're not going to the right places. I go to... The, anyway, I'm not fucking <laughs> Russia here. But no, seriously, I, I, these, these boys haven't been reading the right sources. Now, no, mate, if I the, refer the, you, if I may, there I are people go, buying. I'll, 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 chairman, if you will, I started. There are, there are, chairman, there are chairman, people chairman, buying if, nuclear you, I started, arms. Well, so well, hold on, hold on. Uh, yes. We were talking, um, to be oh, honest, Mike, thank uh, you. Mike mentioned, yeah. thank you. Well, Mike mentioned about uh, guns, That's right. uh, weapons. If I refer you to The Economist of October. 
<laughs> you're, you're talking about... Come on, gentlemen. Well, if you, if you, man you do has that, the, the, the I will refer you to the Nursing man Weekly of have August. Have daily Sport Red Tea. Daily, daily Mirror, 3rd of January, 1978. Earlier this year, everybody was running around like headless chickens, delighted to hear that the Indians and the Pakistan government were letting off uh, nuclear devices underground on a tit-for-tat basis. Mm. And that got in the newspapers, and that made everybody scared. And that made people who rather like the idea, and I'd love to know the psychology of Jane's and Mike's view of the world, why it is that they're delighted to discover that the world is a cesspool. Of course, it isn't. It is. But it was fuel for them, these reports. It was only if you read sober reporting, you discovered that of the 11 nuclear devices which were supposed to have been let off underground, eight of them, all right, were casks of dynamite. <laughs> designed to be let off so that it would frighten the other side into thinking that they had a nuclear capability. <clears throat> you only need one piece of nuclear capability and that's it. But uh, I don't think the world is a cesspit. Far from it. I think there are great uh, opportunities stretching out before us. I just hope that we can find the politicians who will take those opportunities and help us uh, attain some of the things I think this world is capable of attaining because at the moment I don't think the politicians of any of the countries of the Mate world Dickin, are we were talking about person of the year and uh, no one mentioned President Bush. Are you uh, thumbs up or thumbs down for Mr Bush? I, I think he's, as most American presidents have been in my lifetime, the puppet of somebody else. I don't think that we've had an American president yet with a brain worth uh, measuring. It's been... He's either the puppet of their equivalent of Parliament, or he's the puppet of big business. Mm -hmm. And he'll do whatever suits him personally, economically, and he's waiting to write his memoirs and make a fortune and go on lecture to it's it, like Bill Clinton. It's one hell of a job, though, isn't it? I Probably. would like to add to what Mike said, because mm -hmm. I agree with it entirely. However, I would add this, which, again, I consider to be a, an original thought. Um, if you remember, when George Bush came to power, um, we saw uh, uh, heightened military activity over Iraq. Uh, and we also saw a pledge, a renewed pledge to construct Star Wars, which I think was possibly one of the reasons why Al-Qaeda decided on the action that they undertook. So think it through. If it hadn't been for a couple of thousand pieces of hanging chad, which went the wrong way, and we'd had Al Gore as uh, president instead of George Bush, mm -hmm. then we might not have such a special word when we say September the 11th. It, no, might, no, it might never have happened. But another thing on there, you see, is why did Bin Laden, having been funded by the Yanks, uh, turn against them. Now, I've heard, and once again, Tommy will have to be our reference point here, as he is uh, for all matters of fact and truthfulness. Sure. Um, I've heard that uh, he had uh, prostate cancer and went to an American hospital for an operation, uh, which went wrong and shriveled his manhood. And therefore, he was unable to satisfy any of the women in his life, and he turned anti-American as a result of him, because it was I think, American hospital. I think we'll come I, back I to that. We'll come back. We'll let Tommy respond. We'll come back to that in just a tick. You're listening to Talk Sport. On 1089 and 1053 AM. The Clash of the Titans on Talk Sport. Right, uh, Mr. Dickon, you were saying there to young Tommy, um, and Tommy not very happy. Mm. Mm. Tom, what's the matter? What have I got to upset you, dear? I, I, mean, I drifted off halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're rambling around there. Oh, it's what an absolute load of old nonsense. I mean, not very far removed from, uh, you know, B-52 bombers found on the moon and, you know, the bus at the North Pole. What is it? Well, Bin Laden uh, having his manhood withered. Got, listen, he's obviously got some huge problem. Uh, uh, well, it was huge. It's not now. It's yeah. withered. Yeah. Did you, unless you're talking about Bin Laden, let's, let's move it on something. Did you see this disgusting uh, piece of news? You must have. You must have seen it. Where this poor guy... Uh, a market stall holder was uh, threatened with prosecution if he didn't take down his picture of Bin Laden dressed as Santa Claus because it could offend people. Who in this country is offended by Bin Laden having pee extracted from him? And if they are, well, well tough if you're, tips. If you're I, I, I had a Christmas card with three men on the front. He's me. And I think they were the wise men. <laughs> but un underneath, somebody had written... Bin Laden, been drinking, and been and gone. Again, on, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a serious <laughs> note, James, um, the people who might be offended, I grant you it's mm. almost in, an infinitesimal chance, but the people who might be offended would be people of rel uh, relatives of people who may have perished. Do you think so? I think it's almost impossible for that to happen, but you should mm. bear okay. that in mind. 
Thank you, Tommy. It, it, you know, I, I realise you're training. Would you like no, to know, know, but but I, I realise that his training in social work has actually come to I uh, fruition. Do, I do. He's spending too much time with Tony Blair. Right? I'm yeah. 25 pounds an hour, James. <laughs> Bring him a pulpit. <laughs> yeah. No thanks. Of course, uh, we had the Chelsea players <laughs> as well, gentlemen, didn't we? What? If we recall back, we get the Chelsea football? players. Uh, yes, after September. Oh, because they were singing and laughing in the bar. Oh, well, dr drinking plenty around Heathrow. There was mm. a lot of Americans yeah. stranded, mm. and that did not go down well. Well, well, I think that's tough. I mean, I, I don't think... We have to... Obviously, everybody uh, felt, you know, the, 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 uh, the terrible tragedy of September the 11th, but I think for people to be able to sort of smile and have a laugh still after that shouldn't be taken the wrong way. I thought that was all blown I, out I think, of Well, I, I, I'll be honest with you, James, I did, but uh, I got absolutely slaughtered about it. Uh, maybe it was because it was in the vicinity of Heathrow Airport because Chelsea's training ground's out there. There was some Americans there, and they were out of order. Of course, they got lambasted for it. I have to say that I don't think the Americans have come out of this whole thing smelling particularly sweetly. Now, I love Americans. I think America's a great place to go. But the problem with the, the sort of collective American psyche is such that they take everything so, you know, so personally. Now, it, it doesn't, it, it, they won't come over here. We've no Americans coming over here. They want us to go over there. They want us to sort their economy out. But even the celebrities, you know, the Arnold Schwarzer thingies and everyone else, Bruce they, Willis. they won't, Bruce Willis, what are these people? They're wimps. Absolute but wimps. But they were the same when there was that minor... Uh, incident compared to what we're talking about a few years ago. They just won't go on an aeroplane. I mean, they eat like buses internally. But when it comes to flying abroad, do you know how many Americans have got a passport? Twenty percent, is it? Something like that. Sure, eleven percent. Eleven percent. Yeah, but that's still a higher percentage of people than people who've got passports in Africa. I mean, there are a bunch of reasons why people don't have passports. Yeah, well, we're not talking about Africa. We're talking no, about. No, I'm just putting it in some kind of a perspective. A, de for a you. developed nation which relies on. The I wish aeroplane. you'd use your passport more. I, <laughs> I have. I have. I'm, I've, I've come here to join you fellows in. This rather backward country. I'll tell you one legacy of September the 11th, which will run on and on and on. And, and, and one, one, one block of people who came out of it well were the royal family and the decision to play the Star Spangled Banner by the changing of the guard band. Yeah. And Absolutely. then when George Harrison went, there I think is they nothing played, you can say about the royal family that will make me feel sick of well, the, the, the consequence of this, if I may, is that every time they feel their popularity is in need of a little boost, then they'll simply get their band to play yeah, something well. vaguely yes, appropriate. Yes, exactly. I suppose you're right. And it'll go round the world. And whilst the, whilst about we're about talking about. The the say how sweet they are. Whilst we're talking about the royal family, him over there, Mike, he went to Buckingham Palace. For dinner. For dinner. You, I thought I'll you were fibbing. Earth. You have got the audacity to do that. I have no idea. Well, let's ask Mike, why did you go, Mike? Because I was invited by her marriage in her infinite wisdom as a representative of the broadcasting industry and the notable one at that. And she invited me along for a bit of advice, so I went along and gave her some. And? Uh, Advice Sorry, say, say that again. And? I gave her some advice. All right. Sorry. <laughs> but, um, I, I was there in my capacity as a representative of uh, broadcasting and journalism at, at its truest, its best. And, uh, and her, her Majesty said to me, Hello, <laughs> have you come far? And I said, uh, No, Your Majesty, just some London. She said, I understood you live a little farther away. <laughs> I said, I, I do. I, I live in Cornwall. And she said, oh, what a shame Charles is near. I said, I'm glad he's not. <laughs> you did not. Yes, I did. You did not. I did. Oh, yes, I did. And Philip <laughs> said to me that he'd been given a radio by another radio station, which I, I shan't mention. It was a uh, classic event. And they gave him a digital radio. And he said, it doesn't work. <laughs> and I said, have you tried putting batteries in it? He said, oh, batteries. Batteries. He said, I have to put batteries in most things these days to make them work. <laughs> <laughs> and you referred to her as Her Majesty. You didn't call her Liz. Uh, I, I'm I surprised did, at I, that. I didn't bow, mm. but she said my curtsy was bashing. <laughs> <laughs> Two so irrelevant old queens. <laughs> <laughs> when are we and, actually, when Andrew, are we actually going to sort the sick and that everybody has? Andrew's that a regular listener to talk sports. Oh, I know he is. Just he just wants to know what we're he, saying he about him. He said to um, me, "I can't tell you the words he used because that would be awful." But he was talking oh, go on, about, use the words. He was talking about Barthez in, in the, when he sort of had his really bad day for Manchester United. He started yeah. throwing the ball in his own net. And he said, did you see that 
Clown oh, bartenders. He did not. Yes, he did. Oh, I'm not having this. Yes, I'm, not, no, I'm not having this at Christmas. Yes, no. Yes. You see, you, you've, got to, you, you've got to admit that the, the royal You're not even English. What are you going on about? Yeah. The royal we're neither of the things of She sings, sings uh, Flower of Scotland at the Rugger. Well, well, why don't you take her up to Scotland for me? The royal family do give us a story. You see, I mean, <laughs> Mike, Mike's, Mike's got himself there a, a, f a fairly interesting story. Uh, it needs a bit of embellishing before he can tell it down the pub, and I dare say the pub version is probably a little you bit... You haven't heard a bit about the throne room yet, mate. I didn't, I wasn't asking for any more no, of well, it. Well, hang on. There I was still standing in the throne room. Oh, we're going to get a bit uh, more of and, it. And, and she came along and said, this is where we do the OBs and the MBs. I said, how long do I have to stand here but for But, Mike, you've got to... You, look, every, every elderly postman <laughs> and little old lady who works part-time as a lollipop person has got a queen story, a bit like yours. You're going to have to tart it up a little bit, mate. But they don't go with din -dins. And this is what... They, this is what why they they're here. Eh? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I had venison. Yeah. It was very nice too. And uh, I don't think I had too much else to drink because I was too, uh, too, 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 too busy drinking the free whiskey, <laughs> which was very nice indeed. Are you seriously wondering whether you're an MBE now? <laughs> uh, well, I'm not sure if she knighted me or not. No, I mean in the offing. I certainly got something heavy across the shoulders. It might have been a sword, or it could have been one of the henchmen dragging me away. Granted, you were pissed. The gentleman, on a, on a serious <laughs> note, yeah. Hey, here comes the coffee. On a serious note, um, September 11 really, you know, in captivators us for weeks and weeks. We're still, you know, watching the monitors. What about foot and mouth? Al, the greatest respect, listen, before, we, before mouth. we move from, from September the 11th, I mean, we, we've had a bit of a laugh and everything else. I don't think anybody uh, can, can, can really seriously take away from the fact that it has changed the world. Uh, not perhaps as much as we might have hoped it would have changed the world, but, I mean, September the 11th is something that will never be forgotten. James, James, we've done all this. It hasn't. Are you sure? You agreed at the time. Good, okay. It was only 20 no, minutes it'll, ago. It'll, it'll never be forgotten, but it hasn't changed my life with the great society. Not in the slightest. Well, not in the slightest. I, I, I think it has, actually. Yeah. Not I think, in the slightest. I think it has, just nobody's told you yet. I think, it, it. I think <laughs> it's no. rather subtle ways, but then subtle and you don't go together anyway. I promise you, I've still got about my daily routines. That's I wrong. think when journalists were saying that the world will never be the same, they kind of half hope the world would never be the same, mm. because it kind of, like, makes journalists more important. Mm. There's a possibility there, but none of us... A minute like ago, he was claiming to be a journalist. Now he's yeah. hacking them. See? Yeah. I'm, right. a, I'm a great many things, all things but no teacher, Mike. You know. So, I mean, let's move on to Mike, because yeah. uh, yeah. uh, his part of the world hit very hard, yeah. and, s and some people just well, haven't recovered from what foot and mouth, have they, Mike? Oh, foot and mouth. Most, most of Cornwall actually escaped the actual foot and mouth. We had two cases that were confirmed, uh, but the entire county suffered because people wouldn't come west. Mm. And hotels were suddenly empty. Bed and breakfast places were desperate for business. Uh, the National Park, um, the Eden Project, uh, the Gardens of Heligan, and all the places that were expecting a bumper year suddenly found they weren't getting anybody and people were being laid off. Hotels were being closed down and boarded up. People were desperate to try and sell them. Of course, it wasn't a good time to sell. They are just trying to hang on. And the economy of Cornwall and the West Country generally, but particularly of Cornwall, will take years to recover. It was already in a bad state because we had two successive summers which were not good. Mm. And then to follow on with the foot and mouth disease which stopped people coming west, I can only imagine how dreadful it was for people in the north of England where they had much, much more actual foot and mouth than we had in the west, although Devon was the second worst mm. affected county. And James, um of course, Yorkshire. Was it used to live mm. up in Yorkshire, James? Well, I still um, live part of the time in Yorkshire. And now, was uh, there any, any people come up to you in the pub? Or, <coughs> you know, I'm thinking now of um, financially for these uh, farmers who work very hard. I know there is big landowners who earn fortunes, but the old bank manager mm. with the umbrella on a sunny day starts to pitter-patter to get it to slam the door shut let, in your face. Let's, let's forget the farmers, because unfortunately I don't have an enormous amount of sympathy with the farmers. Uh, the rural economy um, is, is quite important, and there is a lot more in the rural economy than just farming. The farmers have been looked after, in many cases, looked after better than they were going to be if they hadn't had this problem. To the extent that some of them actually <coughs> were guilty, and there's no doubt of it, they were guilty of deliberately infecting their herd with foot well, and mouth, and they claim compensation. As, as Tommy said, if you have the proof, let's... Uh, I have them, the proof. Fumble, you should do something proof. about that. One of the proof has because, already been exposed right. because the vet in, in Yorkshire yep. uh, was the one who made the accusation, and the army who were there in charge tried to squash it, but it has yeah. it's been... Well, in that case, let's hope somebody's prosecuted. Yeah, they will be. But there are uh, people I know with pubs, you talked about pubs with little restaurants, hotels and everything, who are now heading towards oblivion, all right? My son has a, has a little shop, 
and uh, it's really it's touch and go now whether really? we can keep that going and whether or not the, the staff will get paid and everything else there'll be no Christmas bonuses nothing like that the the amount of devastation caused because people didn't want to go out they didn't want to walk nobody's no tourists are going everything else has not been addressed in the hotels the pubs the little restaurants the cleaning shop up the road there is you know when you get out into the rural parts of Britain there isn't a shopping mall every ten miles so you do rely on these places. And, and, nobody... and all the other industries locally, yeah. it's like a pebble in a pond. Yeah. It, it spreads out. The, the shock waves of what happened may affect one central business, like the hotel or the pub, but all the people that supply them, all the people that supply the exactly. suppliers, and you get right mm. down to the people who Some actually the cut effect, the yeah. grass, you know. The restaurants, the hotels, all the things that, that make life for lots of people better and that, that they associate with good times are having the worst time at the moment and there's no real government funding they've given a little bit of cash here or there but nothing that's helped the farmers have been looked after people have put their arms around them they've even had people like Tommy sent to counsel them but the people in the rest of the rural economy have had nothing absolutely nothing and I think that is disgusting and I think Blair should be ashamed of himself well he should be ashamed of himself because he gave the impression to the entire world that Britain was closed down uh, don't come to Britain, we're not open for business. He had to do a very smart about term, which he's getting very used to. They call him Spinning Blair now. Um, he had to do a very smart about turn and send some tourist woman over to the United States with a team, expensive team, uh, to try and persuade the Yanks that it was still okay to come to Britain. But by then they too late. decided it was too late. They went elsewhere. Um, when he was sitting an exam, um, Thurber was asked the following question. Is this um, one of your sons? Please uh, no, examine the... That, is he a brother of Thumper? ...the herring fishing industry uh, from the perspective either of the Canadian or the British fishing fleet. And Thurber wrote the following answer. He said, I, I know nothing of um, the herring industry from the perspective of either the Canadian or the British fishing industry, and therefore I will examine it from the point of view of the herring. And I think that it's worth thinking about foot and mouth from the point of view of the poor old cow. Now, I know Mike's a rural man, and uh, I know that a lot of his views um, are shaped by his environment and his background, and, uh, and I wouldn't want to argue with any of that. I mean, he knows dripping cold meadows, whereas James and I are probably more familiar with dripping cold street corners. No, I don't know. I think you and I have both had our fair both share fair of the, share. Uh, the, the haystack in the barn yes, in the summer's right. afternoon. I, 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 That's I, how he got his rheumatism, was dripping cold metal. <laughs> it's, oh, no, it, it's clear to me know. that in a, in a hundred years' time, th there won't be a meat industry in the way that there is now. There just won't be. Can um, I just, can I just say something? I'm no, sorry, I'm no sorry. I, oh, I, okay, I'll just no, finish no. my piece, and then, no. then of course, you can. Oh, OK. Um, and I, I hesitate to say that it's nature working. You don't hesitate at all. You don't shut up. It's a mysterious magic when it comes to the foot and mouth disease. Um, it's ex astonishing to me now, in this day and age, with all the salmonella and with uh, all the health fears that are associated with meat products, uh, that people are still tucking into uh, their steaks the mm. size of a hat box and their, and their chickens and turkeys on Christmas are Day. Are you a veggie, Tommy? I, I would be, but... Um, <laughs> but <laughs> no, he's not. No, he's he's not. not. no what I am is... Can what you spell hypocrite? Yeah. 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 No, 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 what but I am is... You know what, Tommy? <laughs> what, what I am is... <laughs> Tommy talks what complete I am is, crap most of the time just to see very, what happens. Uh, very honest, very honest, and I, I do have the odd... <laughs> plate of meat on a Sunday because yeah. my boy my Odd wife plate. likes yeah. to cook it. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. right. Did yeah. Thurber say that was alright? Yeah. Well, um, Melinda, my wife, uh, said when she was right. No, it's uh, I live with a vegetarian, and uh, does, does Melinda know? No, 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 she doesn't mind. And there's there is no doubt that vegetarians suddenly thought we would all become vegetarians after this foot and mouth. I love a nice piece of juicy red meat with the blood dripping out of it. I can't tell you. But one thing has occurred to me that nothing has been done, and this it's like we live in a country. Where the stuffing government do snuff, they get up, they, then they forget everything. Have we forgotten the scenes of those ridiculous men in the white overalls running after cattle in a field with guns, yeah. shooting them? Yeah. I mean, we spent weeks, didn't we, talking about that? Yeah. Nobody was prosecuted to my uh, mind. No, they weren't. The, these, this was the most. What sort of ineffectual. Oh, I can't. I, the words I shouldn't. This is why, a daytime why not, show. Why no, not, no, no, I'm, no. You can't stop me now. These people should have been brought to some sort of justice. What lame-brained fool runs into a field of animals with a gun and then gets surprised after he's shot at one that the rest run away? That was a bit of a shock. <laughs> These are people. That was a bit of a shock. These I mean, are people that uh, the government uh, are, are, are giving credit mm -hmm. to.
Inoculation, Mike Dickin, why not? Well, there's several reasons for that. Because uh, you can't I get a needle big enough to go through no, a thick eye, that's I, why. I spoke, <laughs> <laughs> I spoke to, uh, I spoke to our vets who deal with, um, large animals mainly, they are mainly farm vets, and they were saying that the inoculations were available, but because it's such a wide spectrum put in the mouth on this occasion, it's rather like using, um, penicillin for particular ailments that you may suffer from, Alan, it may not be wide enough to gather all uh, the poisons together and deal with them. And therefore, in inoculation, there were 33, well, there's more than 33, there were at least 33 strains of foot and mouth, strains to it. And we, we, uh, we don't have an inoculation that covers so we should do four Actually, no, 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 you we can't, do. because it was new. No, we do. There's no, it wasn't. brand new, and they no. didn't know sorry, anything about the new strains. No. Nothing and there is no it. inoculation. No, I think they were harming our meat no, no. industries. No. The, no. the other, other no. reason for no inoculation no, 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 is no. if you do inoculate, then your meat is not for sale anywhere mm. in the world. Well, it's not for sale anywhere in the world now, so it doesn't make any difference. It is, But one of the wonderful things that Mo does, of course, is is he talks with such conviction about stuff that you do tend to believe what he's saying is true. And you must remember it isn't, <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> because I think people are easily, easily yes. fooled. Yes. But <laughs> we di I think it's perceived... Well, you've made a living for it for years. Exactly. It's, haven't we all? It's perceived wisdom now that it was the wrong thing to do to go out and, and, and slaughter all those animals Certainly. for really no reason. Yeah. Yet the government have walked away mm. smelling of roses. Mm. They're going to sell the dome. They're going to sell the dome at a fraction of the cost that has been empty for over a year now, and we have been paying something of, mm. like, what, two million dollars? You're not suggesting we should put all the, the cattle in the dome. The government have walked away yeah. smelling of roses. No, no, you're not suggesting we should put all the cattle in the dome. No, I tell you what we'll do. We're going to talk about the dome in just a tick. You're listening to Top Sport. On 10.89 and 10.53 a.m. The Clash of the Titans on Talk Sport. Right, welcome back to The Clash of the Titans, Tommy Boyd, Mike Dickin, James Will. This is cracking. Yeah, We've gone from foot and mouth. I, I, Hold on, I, shut up. I forgot I was here until you said that. We've gone from foot and mouth to the dome. James, carry on. Okay, well, the dome, I live near the dome, and it's an impressive looking building. Uh, the You're rest starting to look like it as well. Thank you. The rest of the country has, uh, oh, good <laughs> years. <laughs> the rest, the rest of the country has paid for it. Uh, and I have this horrible feeling, of course, this, it may well now have been decided what's going to happen to the dome, and I hope it'll be saved as a building. It looks great. But why has... What? The, I think it does. What, and I'm entitled to my opinion. Why has well, this... I will come back to that. Why? Yeah. Yeah. You don't mind me saying so. <laughs> Why has this government... I'll tell you what you're entitled to, son. Yeah, okay. Even those alone, Mike. No. Come on. Have you both it's finished? No, I can't. Then I hair out, out of my nose. Just shut up. It's bad enough looking at it. Um, the, the, the waste of money. You know, well, on the one hand, we're talking about we need to put up taxes to pay for the health service, which I don't agree with. I think everybody should pay when they go to the doctor, and we'll talk about it late, later on. We sure. already pay enough. Yeah, we should pay more. And... We have allowed the government to get away with just tipping our money into this project and waste it. And now they're selling it off cheap. Mm. Are they clever then? Are they, are they conned us? Can I, can I, put, well, a, can I, can I put a scenario before you? I do think that this government's ability to manage the news is spectacularly effective. And I think that's a good thing because I don't want to return to the times when this country was torn in two and blood was spilled on the streets because this country was at each other's throats. Um, you only have to go back 15 years for that. What do you moment, mean? We had it last summer through the, Burnley, Oldham and Blackburn and people were knocking each other senseless. This country is torn apart. We're on the verge of civil yes, war. I, I know you need, uh, Mike, to believe that the world is a terrible place. I think we still did those people out there. Having, 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 having counseled we're on the verge having of civil war. James Whale, I'll, chairman, I'll happily chairman counsel you. Control them, You're an unhappy man, Mike. I am an unhappy man. Well, I'm sick well, it's to Christmas. death of creeping Humbug. invasion. The, people have come over we fought no. the bloody Germans off, but we're letting all the others in. Yeah, we're going to come to that in a yes. minute, Tommy. I think, you know, I, granted, Mike, nothing's perfect, and it hasn't been perfect in this country, and racism is something that we're going to have to deal with over the coming... There the is months. no racism, racism in this country. What are you right. talking about? Racial tension. Well, there's but, only racial tension caused by this government not actually sorting things out. Okay. Thank you. Um, if you go back 20 years, well, shoe, to, right? for example, they could choose. I've got my feet on the desk, viewers. I have to keep explaining. <laughs> it's radio, James. Um, if you go back it's 20 still years, a hold of it. 
If you go back, if you were, if you were working in journalism as I was, he's using this to, years ago, to think. For his uh, not at all. And he, he was working in journalism. You had now. ongoing industrial disputes were so much the order of the day, and, and violence uh, on the streets of London, mm -hmm. whether it was IRA or, or industrial violence. Um, it was so commonplace that everybody in this country hated several other groups of people. I still now, do. What's happened, and it might be an and anaesthetic. Thank the Lord for that. But this government seems to have poured oil on troubled waters, whether it's by boring us to death or by fooling us with the dome, because what I believe the dome was, not first and foremost, but in part, a strategy to keep us away from some of the things that the government <laughs> wasn't doing. Can we all visit the dome? Tell hang, me. Hang on. Yes. Cer certainly yeah. not. No, you didn't. Mike, did you visit the dome? It, no, I couldn't be bothered. James? What do you mean, Did dome? I visit the dome? We broadcast and we oh, go no. from there. So on James, the of the four of us, is the only one who's been there. Yeah, you're on ISDN, up here flat. No, I was at home. I, uh, no, no, sorry, no, I was in the dome, not at home. <laughs> I was in the dome, not at home. Um, I was in the dome. Yeah. And uh, no, I, I did nobody heckle, else. heckle the Prime Minister. Was it was Thurber, a great show. Was Thurber there? No, he wasn't. Oh, oh. But listen, this is ridiculous. Uh, pouring oil on troubled waters? Let me give you an example of what I'm Mr. talking Boyd. about, James. Let me give Mr. you an example. Pouring Boyd. water on troubled waters? What no, pouring oil. 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 I'm so annoyed I can't can control myself. Give you an example of what I'm talking about. Is what's when wrong. You, when you've given you an example, I'll, uh, in, I'll uh, give you an interpretation right. of what right. he meant. Let me tell, you what's wrong, but tell me what's wrong with your craft, gentlemen. What's wrong with your craft? What the right? hell your are you trade. talking about? If you look out of the window no. of this building, what you can, trade do we you look have? out of this bu building, you can almost see the dome, and it's all you talk about. You can actually see you the dome. You cannot see the dome from this building. I said almost. That's the west. I said almost. The dome's in the east. The point. I'm trying you to make. You can't yeah. almost see the dome. Christ, in fact, you can't see the dome at all. You've got a better chance of seeing the three wires then out that window. You've got the, what, the door Look up. out on, of this on. window, you can see the London Eye. Now that yeah, that's lovely. I love is it. a monument to the genius of and the lottery, which will be here for thousands of it years. It should be. But why are we not spending our time arguing about what a wonderful contribution and piece of architecture and commercial enterprise that is? It why? Is. And it's a psychological point. It's because Never we love mind to why. slag off. We love to slag off the government because we're unhappy at our own lives. But I'm not. Oh. Right. I can see. <laughs> oh, I can see. You, 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 you might be, feel unfulfilled, Mike Dickin. And you might seethe with a rage against the universe for whatever reason, James Whale. You know what? I, you maybe know I've been in California for too long. Yeah. Maybe I've read too many good books. You know what? But I am broadly happy right. with my lot. What you okay. mean? Any, you've, uh, you've, you've, you've found out what other people's opinions anybody, are, so you haven't got one of your own. Anybody who was left the legacy a few years ago that he was left is entitled to be happy. I mean, he doesn't need to work. No. He doesn't need to work. He doesn't need to go out of the house. Of course he's happy. Well, anybody that lives, on, anybody that lives on Colombian Martian powder thinks they are happy anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Mr. Dickin, we mentioned, um, we mentioned, yeah, uh, your, your nose has changed a bit, Tommy. We mentioned earlier racial tension, Mike. I know this is close to your heart. It is very much so. Uh, we've invited every ragtag and bobtail to come into this country. Our Home Secretary now, having lost 800,000 people that you can't account for, is inviting more to come. Should we actually just go over that number? 800,000 people, people have broken into this country illegally. And got lost. And got lost. Mm. And he's now inviting more to come. Uh, we fought off the Germans. I wasn't there, but I'm sure you remember it. Uh, we got rid of them. We've stopped any further invasion of this country by one means or another, and now we're inviting a foreign nation to come and take do you know over. Who, um, do you know who's allowed in now? Yeah, Islam. Taliban. If, yeah, if, you're the ta if you are a Taliban yeah. uh, member yeah. and you no. come to this country yeah. now, no. uh, yeah, of course, and you say, we want asylum, I won't do the accent, we want, well, I might we, do. we no, want no, asylum, no, no, we want asylum, don't. because, well, my yeah. beard gets in the way, we want asylum, uh, because if we go back to Afghanistan, they might kill us. Absolutely. We will now be giving yeah. these murdering okay. bees some sort of... Sure. Look, gentlemen, we were listening to this kind of rubbish from Alf Garnet 30 years ago. No, 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 funny, no, no, no. and it had meaning. This is, this it's neither racism. funny nor has it meaning This isn't now. racism. If, if you'd like me to explain to this, you... This is nation. No, we don't, hang on. We don't in want to be patronised by you anymore, In terms boy. that you haven't heard this. No, we don't want to be patronised. I've, I've, I've heard all these arguments. And no, so we do not want to be patronised anymore. I'll come back and let you... Talk, Tommy, but let, yeah. let James and, and he, Mike he, hide he's away. He's worried. Here. He's worried that he he'll have to either shut up or yeah. put up. You know what I think we should do, Michael. We should just let him because he's a young guy. He keeps telling us he yeah. doesn't understand the problems. He yeah. lives in this big house in the country, mm. has no contact with ordinary people at all. 
No, I, mean, no, 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 no. I don't care, and I don't think Michael cares, who comes to live in this country. I don't care who comes to live no, here, no, as no. long as they pay their way, and as long as they're proud to be British, Absolutely. and as long as they speak English perfectly. I am fed up with going into shops, I'm fed up with go getting through to call centres, I am fed up with going into post offices and being mm. confronted by somebody that doesn't speak English. English. If I wanted Sorry, to live, make if I wanted to live in the nation of Islam, I'd have gone there. Mm. And I'm being forced to live in the nation of Islam and take Islamic ways as being British ways because they are slowly but surely taking over. You can blame them. They're being encouraged so to do. Not there anymore, should be a think. nationhood test in this country. Yep. Uh, I'm, I know it's a bit trite. The Americans make you swear and, and, and honour the flag and, and, and re recite some oath or another. But I really believe it's time that we have that in this country, and if you can't do it, then you get out. Exactly. So can I just exactly. say, Tommy, Tommy... Ha hang on, 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 and then Tommy can come in. We could sort this problem out easily if we encourage the French to be a little more respectful of our borders. We can also sort this out if we have secure camps. And don't start using the word concentration, I've heard it all before. Secure camps, where anybody who comes to this country in fear of their life is put until they're processed and we find out whether they have a legitimate reason to stay in this country. And then we'll look after them, and if not, they can go. Right, uh, Tommy, before I, uh, you come in, Tommy, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I know the guys are very, very strong on this, of mm. course, and you disagree, mm. but uh, from my point of view, I'd say 98% of the people I know would agree with them. Mm. I would disagree with that. I promise you. I would think that those who voice views say those things, but most people don't. Most people aren't asked. Uh, and most people, when they are asked what they think about this issue, um, feel that they need to side with the guys, with the things that they have said, which I have to say, you know, the arguments against, the arguments about, about being able to speak the language, um, the arguments about people being um, uh, kind of the equivalent of draft dodgers, I think that's entirely cosmetic. I think it's, it's clear that possibly, possibly not the two guys here in the studio, but certainly the bulk of people who spout this kind of stuff and they do it with real conviction are fundamental racists. They're not allowed to be. Are fundamentally xenophobic. <laughs> They're not allowed to have are, an opinion are if it differs from yours. Are we're fun women. Are we know are we're fundamentally not. And we know that people who, who have these views are not either. Fundamentally. No, people, I don't like who them. Who would be rubbished yeah. and called a people, racist people, by somebody like you? People, 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 you let's, let's, southern Nancy. So what the hell do you think you're doing? That, I'll come around there in a minute and stick those headphones. Come on. Let Tommy yeah. have his seat. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. No, 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 they will not allow anybody to have an opinion yeah. that doesn't exactly. agree with them. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We are, we've I'll lost back back to you. in this country. I'll return you, mate. People are, I'll come back people to you. People are scared to say what they believe no, in this country because of people like him. Right. <laughs> no, start again. Okay, apparently I'm the one who's against free speech. <laughs> uh, totally. Right. Right. Come on, go on, Tommy. Let me explain why I think we owe the world a favour. We owe the world a favour uh, because of what happened two or three hundred years ago. What happened two or three hundred years ago is all the people in this country and our, our ancestors, they, they knew families who had the spunk and the guts to get out and go to the new world. There were some, I believe it's 30 million Europeans got up and went, <coughs> took, took, took the bull by the horns, got up and went. Now, who was left here? The people who were left here were the people... I hope afraid. this is going somewhere because it, we're wasting valuable time when we could be slagging you off. Yeah, I know, I know, and don't you enjoy it. But listen to this. Listen, cause again, this is, again, you know, this is original. You know, it's not a rehash. It's not something we've all heard a hundred times. Have you finally got that hair, mate? No, I got all of it. Come on, come on. Look, I'm looking forward to New Year's Eve. Yeah. Hurry up. Yeah. Um, they went. And now, what that means is that the United States is a country made up of people who are genetically risk takers, they're bold. Uh, they do things, they're doers, and we yeah, know the American Get on aeroplanes and come over here and spend a few bucks. Yeah, very, very brave people. What we friends. are, what all of us are, we are all the descendants of people who sat on their hands. People who did damn all. People who waited to see right. what the weather was like. Okay, Tommy, right. listen, now, you're talking bollocks, just, and, and yeah, quite yeah, frankly, I've had enough. No, 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 taken a very brave step with their lives to come to this country because they're doing something that neither James nor Mike 
have the guts or the wherewithal to do, which is to pursue prosperity for their families. That's why they're coming here and that's why they're here. And what they're doing is they are infusing the British culture with some spunk, some enterprise, okay. some okay. courage. Let me, let me just say, let me say, no, my no, 20, yes, never, yes. No, no, oh, I want oh, 20 oh, seconds oh, here. I want you to ask yourself, yeah. Tommy. Yeah. Oh, let me ask Tommy this. Tommy, is it right then I walk in the East End of London, I walk down a street, people dress totally to me, talk totally different to me, are you t and who send the kids to different schools that don't teach English, you tell me that's being British? I don't know whether, how much that happens. I know uh, we know... A lot. I know I, well, a lot. What I know, what I a know... A lot. What I know is... Where and have you been? And if the government get their way, it'll happen more with these single faith schools, which is the worst idea anybody what has. What a crackpot idea. What I, know, what I know is this, because people... Religion divides the world, so we have single faith schools to make mm. sure we divide... The what world. I know is the case is that because people dress differently, <laughs> we know that they're right. different. <laughs> <laughs> what you two guys have got is that you wear fairly ordinary clothes, oh, right. cut your hair in a very conventional way, yeah, yeah, yeah. and sashay down the street <laughs> talking the kind of English which you think means that you're God's <clears throat> given. The fact of the right. matter is, if you had to walk around with Who's some of your obnoxious views tattooed on your forehead, or were made to grow an ugly beard simply because you've got ugly views, we'd all be frightened of you far more Calm frightened down. than we are Listen. of the Calm Muslims, down, or the Sikhs, Islam's or the Hindus, right. or the British right. country with their one, one last thing. If my okay. microphone gets turned down again, I'm going home early. Now, I'll tell you that for a start, right? And I won't be using any physical violence on any of you because you're not <laughs> worth it. Mr. Boyd is the only person who threatens physical violence. Any time. First of all, see, <laughs> see what I mean? Any time. You know, Come because on. he's such a small person, you can't really do anything about it. There is no problem, as far as I am concerned, of my learned colleague, Mr. Dixon, uh, Mr. Dickson, <laughs> no, because I'm annoyed now. Don't start <laughs> interrupting me, because I'm very angry. Come on, then. Mr. Dickin and I, I think, agree on this. If people come to this country and choose to make a new life here, great. If they come here and add to the prosperity of this country, great. I don't care what colour they are. I don't care what religion they are, as long as they keep to themselves, anyway. Uh, if they come here and they want to come here because they think uh, living in Britain and being British is a, is a thing that they'd like to do, great. The same way that if you go to America, you, in, you, uh, you embrace being an American first. All right? That's what we have to do. And Blunkett was absolutely right. I think, actually, he, he showed quite a lot of leadership in what he said. But people who wish to live in little ghettos and continue to live in, in, uh, in countries that uh, they're not in over here is not acceptable, particularly if those people, most of them are on benefits and they have never contributed to anything in this country either. We, of course, will not ever turn our backs on people who are in need. We will always look after people who need to be looked after. That's why we should have these yeah, secure... But how, how, how do we do this? How, hang on, hang, hang well, on. How, how, how do you we... shut up and listen well, and then you might learn? No, because this is far too we important will, and explosive. We will look it after them. Them. Right. Put put them. Carry on. We will look after see, them I'm by quiet putting them... Say, be quiet, you see, because I'm a broadcaster. Yeah, carry on, James. Oh, hang on, he's a broadcaster here <laughs> now. Michael, would you like to take over? I'll tell you what, we're going to come back to this. No, 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 no. We are. We're going to come back to this. This is Talk Sport.